Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn and Way of Spears and today I wanted to join you for a little tea time episode because there's something that's been kind of weighing on my mind that I just wanted to get out there. And now that it is 2018, we are at the very beginning of the new year, I thought that it would be the perfect opportunity to talk to you about your dreams and your writing goals and how to make those a reality and how to become the author of your dreams. So go ahead and grab your tea or your coffee and let's get started. So for the longest time, I want to say starting in like eighth grade, uh, is when I knew that I wanted to write books for a living. I had always enjoyed writing. Even when I was in elementary school, I really enjoyed it. But I didn't realize that I wanted to do it professionally until I was in the eighth grade. And that was when I started um, doing text-based role play, which is something that I have mentioned in previous videos. I started on Neopets and I would write with other writers and we would have our characters and we would write stories together and when I got into that kind of community that's when I realized how much I loved it and that you know it would be the middle of the summer and I wanted to stay inside and write stories instead of going to the pool or to the lake or you know roller skating I wanted to stay inside and I wanted to hang out with my characters and my writing friends and that's when I realized that I wanted to write for a living However, when I was in 8th grade and ninth grade and 10th grade and all the way up through high school, I never, like, I didn't know if I would ever achieve my goals. I never, you know, knew if I was going to even write a book, let alone be able to publish one, let alone be able to make an income off of that and be able to live off of writing books. And I definitely struggled with self-doubt and fear and so many really negative emotions, you know, things that just completely held me back and distracted me from my end goal, which was to become the author of my dreams, right? And I truly remained in this state of fear and of not knowing until I was in college, you know, until after I had finished writing Way of Spears, I want to say, because while I was in college, I really became a new person. I expanded my mind in so many ways. I expanded my views on the world. And through doing that, I realized something that I feel has given me such creative freedom. And I want to talk about that with you today and share it with you because I feel that if more people were able to adopt this mindset, so many people would just feel free to create and to be successful and to be the author of their dreams truly. So like I mentioned, when I was younger, I knew that I wanted to write books for a living, but I didn't know if it would be possible. And I have completely changed my entire... Um, mindset when it comes to this because I truly believe now in my life that I decide my reality and I decide my life. It's no longer a question of whether or not I will be successful or whether or not I will be able to make my living writing books. I've had people you know mention to me in the past that oh if this works out, if you're able to do this and I always say no there is no if. I have made a decision that writing books is going to be how I make my living. This is how I want to live my life. I don't want to have to go out and get, excuse my language, a shitty job that makes me feel miserable every single day and then hope that when I get home at 7 o'clock at night, I'm able to spend an hour or two hours in these worlds that I create and doing the thing that makes me truly happy. I'm not going to allow that to become my life. I have decided that my life will be writing books and every single day I am taking steps toward that goal. I am taking steps toward that life. So don't let anybody tell you no, including yourself, 
And do not say or let anybody say to you, if. Because there is no question. You have to decide if this is going to be your lifestyle. You have to decide if you are going to be successful at this. Now, writing books is extremely difficult. It's one of the most difficult things I've ever done in my life. It's not like painting a picture, which is, you know, difficult in and of itself. It's not like creating a song. It's not like sculpting something or creating jewelry. All of those are creative pursuits, and I respect and admire all of them. But writing a book can take years of your life. It's not something that you sit down and do in one week or that you do over the course of one month. It takes a long time, which makes it even more difficult for you to achieve. And because of this, it really comes down to hard work and not luck if you want to succeed in the book industry. Even if your goal or your dream is to just write and publish one book, you're not going to get lucky. You have to work incredibly hard. But that doesn't mean that it's not worth it. Because when you finally get to the final page and you're able to write the end on your first ever manuscript, the first draft you've ever completed in your life, it's hard to communicate how empowering and liberating that feels. Because I believed for so many years that I would never finish writing a book. I started and abandoned so many novels when I was in high school that I had almost convinced myself that I wasn't cut out for it. I thought that I needed to go to writing programs and pay other people to teach me how to write. And I thought, you know, maybe I can't do this. Maybe I will never finish a book. But that wasn't the question at all. It wasn't a question of my skill or my talent, which I think many people deviate to. You know, if, you f if you're not able to finish a book, you think I'm not good enough, but that's not it at all. If you're not able to finish a book, ask yourself, why are you abandoning that book? Is it that you lack self-discipline? Do you lack motivation? Do you continually get distracted by other projects and ideas? You have to ask yourself these questions and narrow down what the actual root is, what the cause of your failure is. Which leads me into my next point is that many people fear failure, but I look at failure as progress and motivation. Because if you are not failing, that means you're never taking a step forward. So when I was a senior in college, I had written Way of Spears. I had not yet published it. I had not yet edited it, but I had the first draft and I was in, you know, I'm a create, I was a creative writing major. So I had creative writing classes and we used to do peer critiques every single day. So every day we would critique the work of two students and it was my turn to have my work critiqued. And I took in two chapters, one or two chapters of Way of Spears. And I thought I was gonna get really great feedback. And what happened was many of my peers and classmates really enjoyed my work, but my professor thought it was a complete joke. She thought it was unoriginal. She thought the characters were cliches. She thought there were too many tropes. Um, she even made a mention of the cloak that my character wore because she thought that wearing a cloak was too cliche, too fantasy. Um, and she even thought at one point, she even asked me if this was, like, if it was supposed to be tongue-in-cheek humor, which is what she called it. And I, to this day, don't really understand what that was supposed to mean. I think she was trying to communicate that she was wondering if I was using my characters and my story as a way to make fun of other characters and stories, as if, as if I was using Way of Spears to make fun of other fantasy novels, which was, of course... Not at all my intention. I love fantasy and I would never seek out to make fun of or belittle, you know, a genre or something else. And it was so shocking and so painful to receive this critique from somebody that I respected, somebody that was a professor at Colorado State University. And I was so hurt by it that I didn't work on Way of Spears for over a month after I received that criticism. And during that time, I questioned a lot. I questioned whether I had any skill as a writer. I questioned whether I would ever amount to anything as a novelist. 
And it was after I went through this failure and after I overcame it that I realized that I could not put my future or my success in anybody else's hands. I had to decide for myself that I was talented, I was skilled, and I would be successful. And that moves into what I want to talk about regarding traditional versus self-publishing. So for many years, self-publishing was really the only option for me and for many people, I think, because I didn't know anything about self-publishing. I didn't know if it was a viable option. I didn't know if anybody could achieve success with self-publishing. And because I was so stuck in the mindset that traditional was the only way to go, I thought that if I was never able to find an agent or an editor or a publishing house that loved my work and wanted to represent it, I might spend my entire life writing novels that nobody would ever read. And that is a terrifying thought. To think that you could spend your entire life working on this craft, working on something that is so important to you, that really comes from your heart and your soul, and then to never be able to share it with a single person because there were always gatekeepers telling you that you had to keep out. Yes, I am interested in traditional publishing, but I am interested in it now because I have spent time in the self-publishing world, I have done research about indie publishing, and I am ready to explore my options. However, I am very aware that if I'm not able to find an agent that loves my work as much as I do, and if I'm not able to find an editor or a publishing house that just throws their hands in the air in excitement when I present my work to them, that doesn't mean that I'm a failure and that doesn't mean that Song of the Dryad won't arrive safely in the hands of the people that I have written it for. Self-publication has completely broken open the world of publishing and writing and novels because it used to be that somebody else had to tell you yes, right? Somebody else had to say you're good enough, but that's not the case anymore. As long as you are willing to put in the hard work, put in the effort, the blood, sweat, and tears that is required to not only write a book, but edit that book and make sure it's something that people will enjoy, something that's good, high quality fiction. You can self-publish it. You are an author. You can achieve success through self-publication. There aren't, there don't have to be gatekeepers anymore. Nobody has to tell you yes in order for you to achieve success. So if you feel like you have an idea of the author you wanna be, you want to be this author of your dreams, I want to tell you that you already are that author. It's already inside of you, you are that person. But you just have to push yourself hard enough to achieve the goals that will allow that inner author of your dreams to step forward. When I self-published Highborn, my dad used to always tell me, you are an author. You already are successful. And for many years, I didn't understand what that meant. Because when I first published Highborn, it was my, you know, my second novel that I ever wrote, the first that I ever published. Um, I didn't have any social media following. The only people that bought Highborn were my family and friends. And I didn't think I was an author. I thought that I either had to be traditionally published to consider myself an author, or somebody else had to tell me that I was good enough. And that would give me the title of author. But I understand now what he was saying, because I was an author at that point. I am an author now. I wrote a book, I edited a book, and I self-published that book, which is now Highborn. And I really want to communicate to you that you are that author as well. If you love writing, if you absolutely adore fiction, and you want to publish books, that author's already in there. You just have to let that person out through hard work, determination, blood, sweat, and tears, never giving up. It is extremely difficult. I am not going to lie to you. One of the most difficult things I've ever done, as I said at the beginning of this video, but that doesn't mean that it can't be done. So you might be asking, okay, I want to be this author of my dreams. How do I become that person? How do I get there? Maybe you've tried to write 10 novels and you've only gotten, you know, to chapter five or chapter 10. 
Maybe you have this idea, you have all these characters fleshed out, but you just can't seem to sit down and write it. How do you let that author out? How do you become the author of your dreams? Dreams are incredibly important. I have many of them. I love dreams. They're something that really truly drives me. But dreams won't get you anywhere unless you take those dreams and break them down into goals. So for example, let's say your dream is to sell 5,000 copies of your novel. But where is that novel? You haven't even written it yet, right? So how do you sell 5,000 copies of a novel that you haven't even written? It seems like a lofty goal. It's a big dream to achieve that, right? How do you get there? Well, let's break that down. In order to sell 5,000 copies of the novel, you need the novel. So what do you need to write that novel? Well, if I was one writing it, I would need an outline. I am absolutely a planner. I think it's incredibly important for many people to have a plan moving forward, myself especially. I cannot write a book without a detailed, organized outline. So if it were my dream to sell 5,000 copies of this book I had not yet written, my first goal would be to create an outline. All right, it's a small piece of the puzzle. Spend a month, spend three months if you have to, and outline the entire thing. Make sure you have everything figured out before you even think about putting pen to paper or fingers on the keyboard. Because many of the novels that I started and abandoned fell apart because I didn't have a plan. I was so excited to start writing that I just sat down I wrote as much as I could and I realized I had no idea where I was going and no idea what was going to happen. I couldn't write that book without knowing what was in the book. So an outline would be step one. Again, that's a small piece of the puzzle. But once you have your outline, what's next? Writing chapter one? Okay, you can do that. Writing chapter two? Okay, starting to get a little bit more difficult. Then maybe you can set a writing routine for yourself. You want to write 500 words every evening, you know, with a cup of tea or a glass of wine. And you set that routine for yourself. And suddenly you are slowly moving toward that dream of selling those 5,000 copies. But you will never, ever arrive at that dream if you don't actually start at step one. Make the outline, right? Create the characters. Write chapter one. You have to break these dreams down into goals if you ever want to achieve them. If you want to make your living writing novels, but you've never written a novel before, how are you going to take steps in that direction? Are you going to buy and download Scrivener? Is that your first step? Are you going to go out and buy you know, books on how to write a novel and start doing your research? Whatever your small step is, I encourage you to take that step. Even if it's just going to the library or the bookstore and looking at books. You don't even have to borrow or buy one. Just go and look at those books. Take a step in the right direction. Start telling people about your dream to be an author. Uh, even after I published Way of Spears, I still didn't tell people about it in my personal life. I didn't really tell many friends about it. I didn't tell family about it because I didn't think I was good enough. I wasn't proud of my work because I thought that it's not traditionally published, it's not worth anything. And I was so, so wrong. And I'm at the point in my life now where a woman that works at the grocery store that I go to, she knows that I'm a self-published author. Uh, one of my pet sitting clients, I told her the other day, she asked me what else I do besides pet sitting and I said, well, I am a novelist, I write young adult novels. And because I have finally seen that in myself and I have allowed the author of my dreams to step forward, I have been able to feel like I'm genuine. Um, it's easy to feel like a fraud. It's easy to feel like you're not good enough, you're not worth it, you shouldn't be telling people you're an author because your books aren't good enough or they're not bestsellers, but that's bull, okay? It takes you believing in yourself and being proud of yourself and your work for other people to believe in you and also to see the merit in your work. So I know that this was a bit of a long video. It's sitting at 24 minutes right now. So we'll see how much of that gets cut down because I talked for most of it. 
Um, but I really just want to really drive home the fact that nobody determines your life but you. And if you want to be the author of your dreams, remember that you already are that person. You just have to let that person step forward. And you have to put your butt in the chair or stand at your standing desk like I have or go to your favorite coffee shop or library and actually start doing the work. Whatever your dream is, break it down into goals. And whatever those goals are, know that you can achieve them. They won't be easy. Writing a book is never easy. But it is doable and you can absolutely accomplish anything that you set out to do. Now, my tea has unfortunately gone cold at this point. Still pretty good though. And I guess I'm going to wrap up this video at this point. Uh, I thought that the beginning of 2018 was the best time to film and upload this because so many people are reflecting on 2017 and setting goals and resolutions for themselves moving forward. And I know that many of you out there want to write your book in 2018. You know, if you have never finished one before and it is your dream to write it this year, I'm here to tell you that you can do it. I don't doubt you at all whatsoever, but you have to believe in yourself and you have to be willing to put in the work. And only after you put in the work will you be able to achieve the goals that will lead to attaining your wildest dreams. So again, please remember the author of your dreams is already inside you. You already are that person. You just have to let them step forward. So as always, thank you so much for watching this video today. Please let me know in the comments down below what you thought of this kind of chatty, motivational type video. Um, talking about this stuff is something that I'm super passionate about. I am somebody that absolutely believes that I can and will achieve all of my dreams because I don't, like I said before, it's not a question in my mind. Um, I don't allow myself to ever doubt what I will achieve. And I want to be able to share more of this with you because I receive so many messages from people that want so badly to write a book and they're so excited and they're telling me about their characters and, you know, how they think the story is going to end. But then when I ask them, have you written it yet? It's usually a no. And there's, you know, a slew of problems along the way that have led them to giving up or feeling like they're good enough or that they can't achieve anything and... Again, it's ridiculous. Like, we have to squash these negative thoughts and the negative self talk that puts you down and makes it difficult to achieve your goals and dreams. So, again, let me know what you thought of this video down below. Give it a thumbs up if you would like to see more videos like this. And I guess I will see you guys in my next video. I hope you're having a wonderful 2018, and I'll see you then. Bye.